Please welcome CNN commentator and the host of the upcoming series, The Redemption Project, Van Jones. Howdy. Um, I am pumped. I get to talk to my hero. Uh, the next guest, uh, Lee Daniels, he's a truth teller. He's got a credo, less is more. But how much more has this guy created? Runaway success with Fox's empire, this seductive hip hop drama. Uh, it just seems like there's nothing this guy can't do. He knows how to get in the, the zeitgeist. Is that the way you say it? The zeitgeist. Um, undeniable, singular voice, rarely seen in American culture. He is here with us. Welcome writer, director, producer, Lee Daniels in the house. Uh, good to see you, brother. You too. Very, very good. Um, well, first of all, uh, I am thrilled to get a chance to talk with you. What would your grandmother say? to see this crazy rise. Okay, before I came out, can I just, before yes. I came out, Van says, uh, Van was like, I said, Van, you, uh, you do this all the time, don't you? He goes, uh-uh, it's, it's, time, it's, it's time 100. I go, what is that? <laughs> and then all of a sudden I got nervous. Nah. So let me get a, let me get a regroup yeah, for a yeah. little bit. That's good, well listen, that, <laughs> are you glad he's here? Should he be nervous or should he be happy to be here? It's Lee Daniel. Yeah, nothing to be nervous really? about. Um, my grandmother. Your grandmother. Uh, my grandmother would be very, very proud. Uh, my grandmother told me at an early age that, um, that uh, I had a gift. And, uh, and I watched her from her bed as a diabetic amputee uh, get people to come out to vote in the 60s. And, uh, and she had sons, and her sons would drive her around in a convertible and get people to come out mm. to vote. And she had a gun to make sure that you came out to vote. <laughs> yeah. so, so she was a disruptor she was a in disruptor, the real sense. Truly. <laughs> she about to disrupt your life. She, unless you came out to vote, she had, she had a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about, so you come by this kind of disruption, honestly. <clears throat> um, your first film, was from the very beginning, was funded by a big Hollywood studio. As soon as you came in, you were loved by Hollywood. You, no. <laughs> Tell us about your first <laughs> film. Your first film. Where did well, the money come from? Uh, well, some of it was drug money. Because, uh, you know, look, here's the thing. I was never, I never, I was disruptive at birth. I was thinking about the, the topic as we come here. And um, it was disruption from the beginning. Because no one in Hollywood wanted to see a movie about a little fat kid that died at the end and an interracial love story. Every studio just kept passing. So I had to go out and do what I've done on every of my films, which was to uh, raise the money and, um, and have them bid for it at the end. Yeah. Um, when you and that's even down to my most recent film, too, you know? Yeah, you've, you've never been funded no, by Hollywood. No, I've never, I've never had a studio film, and uh, I'm proud of that. I mean, they, 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 I don't know, they don't know how to Deal with disruption, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Well, so listen, you know, when you think about precious, uh, shock people in terms mm -hmm. of the honesty, the rawness of it, you know, Empire, I mean, from the very first show, you know, it became a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, the, you're doing stuff that people told you literally up until they made history was impossible. Correct. Told you literally up to the point Correct. that it made history could not possibly work. Correct. You got people watching right now who have their own impossible dreams. What is it in you that has allowed you to defy all these odds as a black, gay, from the hood yeah. <laughs> filmmaker in a town that's not about that? Yeah, I think when you are young and you see your uh, friends shot and they die in front of you, at six or seven, when you, when you survive the AIDS crises, and before it was, there was even a name for the word AIDS, and you watch all of your lovers, everybody you've been intimate with, every friend that you have gone, and you've been to over 200 funerals, you watch people die with you, 
I think that, that uh, and you're bullied because you are black and gay, I think that you, there's a exterior that there's a there's a there's a shield mm. that you that you put up that mm. is that's unpenetrable mm. that you will you burst open the door you don't take no for an answer and there's nothing to lose yeah. you ain't got nothing to lose I had nothing to lose yeah. uh, that's, I've heard it. Yeah, no no pressure no diamonds yeah no pressure no diamonds well you are a diamond thank you uh, sir you know in this culture and I understand you are not done disrupting stuff. No, hell no. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, grandma man, you. Um, tell, tell us about your most recent attempt to disrupt the theater world. Oh, yeah, my God. I'm so excited about it. I'm here in New York because uh, I started from theater, um, and I'm going back to the theater. I'm um, promoting uh, my new play, my first play uh, that I'm producing, and the public let me produce with them, um, called Ain't No Mo by a brilliant young African-American uh, playwright, Jordan Cooper. And it is the most breathtaking thing that I've seen ever. Wow. I think that, I mean, not That's since- That's saying a lot, though. I, I, I you're ran you're into, Mr. Breathtaking. That's saying a lot. <laughs> I went to the, I went, when I was a kid, I stole my mom's car, and I drove to New York from Philadelphia to see Dreamgirls. Mm -hmm. And it changed my life, and it made me want to do what it is that I do. And, um, and not, since, not since this play have I been that inspired. So what is it about <clears throat> this writer that has grabbed you? 23-year-old writer? 23, yeah. Very young. He doesn't care. He doesn't care who he's offending. We're in a world right now where you can't say nothing to nobody about nothing. <laughs> and he don't care. He don't care, OK? <laughs> Fuck it, OK? Right. And I love that he has that attitude, because I think that we have bred, I know I have bred, um, my kids, I love you guys. Uh, but uh, you know, they're millennials, they're entitled. And I think I wanted them to have the, the life I didn't have. And so I think that nowadays, the filmmaker is saying, you know what? The, 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 the filmmaker of color says, hey, you know what? You gonna give me $500 million to, to make a movie, or I'm gonna call you racist. You gonna, you gonna review that movie, New York Times right? or I'm gonna call you racist. Mm. And you're going to take me to the Academy Awards, or I'm going to call you racist. Mm. That's deep. Because what becomes more important, the messenger or the message? Mm. Where is art in this, in this place? And I think that um, I think it's going to, I think, I know that we have swung you know, this way to get back to where we are, but I think, I think we're in danger territory now. Now, this is. This is <clears throat> deep to hear from you because you had to fight to get to a place where there could be that level of diversity, where those, those films could be made. Yeah. So as somebody, so if anybody has credibility to raise the issue, it would be you. But what is your fear? What is your concern? I just that, wonder that, you know, like I have white liberal friends that are like side eye right now. Like, what's up? <laughs> like, you know, like, why is it, it's a little unfair. And I know that we have to get back to the middle, but I think that there is, I don't know, I think I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. So this is- Because it's not, a, all this stuff is not, I'm not gonna say, it, a lot of it's not good. What do you mean, a lot of the content's not good? Yeah, I'm not, you know, just because it's black don't mean it's woke. Okay. So we need some more time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so if someone listening to you might say, well, hold on a second. You know, it, it's been so hard uh, to get some of these voices to break through. Of course. And there has been real racism there. I've ex You may have noticed. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Are you kidding, kidding me? Exactly. I'm, I'm, so, yeah. so, so help, help people understand it, because this, this is a very interesting point. You're saying, listen, I faced it, I fought it. Your weapon to fight it was excellence. Yes. That was your weapon. Mm -hmm. Your weapon to fight it was? Not a, not a, um, a hashtag or an Instagram. That was not my weapon. My weapon was the work. My weapon was the word, and my weapon was the art. Mm -hmm. And so this... So and at a time that many people didn't even understand the, my point of view, and they didn't appreciate my point of view. So most of the movies were, were poorly reviewed. And I was okay with that, because they didn't dare, I didn't dare challenge the system. 
I was disruptive to how dare he make a movie about. Right. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, the, the level of, of disruption that you have you know, brought forward, even this conversation, is just breathtaking. It's, it's, it's bracing. We're not used to hearing. You're supposed to come out and say a bunch of PC stuff and go home. I, you know, so, <laughs> so the fact that you're willing to take us on, what is it in you that lets you stand for the truth even when it's messy, even when it's not welcome? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to tell black folks stuff we don't want to hear, to tell white folks they don't want to hear, to tell gay folks stuff. What is it? Something some, you can't drop it on your head. What is it? Something is trying to burst out of you that refuses to be silenced, even uh, when it might be, uh, you know, dangerous, uh, dangerous. to be silenced. Um, I've been silenced all my life. Mm. I've been silenced at birth. I was told I was nothing at birth, you know, by my father. So I, you can't, you can't get any worse than that. So I ain't, ain't nobody gonna shut me up. Well, hey, listen, I, I love it, I love it. Listen, um, I have one last question for you. Yes. Which is, you know, I'm a geek. Geek? Um, I'm a geek. Are you? I'm science fiction, okay. comic book nerd yeah. from the door. And there's a rumor going around, and I want it to be either confirmed or disconfirmed, yeah. that you may actually be disrupting the whole superhero genre with a gay superhero project. Mm -hmm. True or false? It's true. It's true. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. It is true. Oh. Hey, you. Hey. It's called super. It's called super bitch. <laughs> and he's. And he's. I found him on Instagram of all places. And he. He like does backflips and he has a cape and he does karate and he. Oh my God, he's gonna be a hero. I'm really excited, it's not, not that much money, I'm not, we're not putting that much money behind it, but it's a, well, it's a couple million dollars for a superhero movie, that's pretty fucking exciting, hey, it's hey, very listen, exciting. With, with a name like Super Bitch, you ain't gotta promote it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be, hey listen. Uh, I'm want, not gonna direct it though, I'm gonna find a young filmmaker that can. And make, and make it happen, listen. Yeah. I wanna say just on behalf of a whole bunch of people who, you know, I'm, I was born in 68, so I'm uh, 10 years younger than you are. Um, you literally will not be able to talk about American culture on the front end of this century without mentioning your voice, your name, and your work. It is an honor to be here. Thank Give you. it up for Lee Daniels. Thank you. Love you, man. Very, very good.